When a body was considered for human consumption, none of it was discarded except the bitter gallbladder. In the deceased's old sugarcane garden, maternal kin dismembered the corpse with a bamboo knife and stone axe. They first removed hands and feet, then cut open the arms and legs to strip the muscles. Opening the chest and belly, they avoided rupturing the gallbladder, whose bitter content would ruin the meat. After severing the head, they fractured the skull to remove the brain. Meat, viscera and brains were all eaten. Marrow was sucked from cracked bones, and sometimes the pulverized bones themselves were cooked and eaten with green vegetables. In North Fall, but not in the South, the corpse was buried for several days, then exhumed and eaten when the flesh had ripened and the maggots could be cooked as a separate delicacy. Until the 1950s, the four people of the Eastern Highlands province in Papua New Guinea had little contact with the colonizers etching their way through their land. Not much was known about the four people, though as early as 1936, the effects of a strange disease now known as Kuru had been witnessed. The term Kuru comes from the four-word Kuria, which means to shake, a description of one of the classic symptoms of the disease. The first stage of Kuru would see the afflicted individual unsteady on their feet, exhibiting trouble pronouncing words and suffering from uncontrollable muscle tremors. In the second stage, the individual would be incapable of walking without support, performing abnormal and uncoordinated movements while tremors became more severe. During this stage, signs of depression and emotional instability would arise, but the individual would be unable to stop themselves from sporadic laughter. In the third stage, the disease becomes terminal, with their abnormal movements worsening to a point where they can no longer sit up without support. A new set of symptoms arrive at this stage, including having difficulty swallowing, incontinence, loss of the ability or will to speak, and unresponsiveness when conscious. Toward the end of the third stage, those suffering would often develop chronic ulcerated wounds which became infected easily. Once signs of this last terminal stage arose, the afflicted would pass within three months to two years, often due to pneumonia or other infection. This was not a new disease introduced by the white man's arrival, such as influenza, but something completely different. In 1936, a European gold prospector would witness the effects of Kuru, but the first official mention of the disease was included in reports of patrol officers in 1953. The natives of the four tribes stated the disease had been present for a long time, but in recent years, Kuru had become increasingly severe. The disease itself was restricted to natives of the four linguistic groups in Papua New Guinea's eastern highlands and neighbouring linguistic groups. It had appeared shortly after the 20th century in the Uwami village and spread to the Awandi in North Four. Within 20 years it spread across different villages of the four people. Kuru was nine times more prevalent in women and children than men in its peak, but slow spread was not consistent with a genetic disease. Though Kuru wasn't officially documented until 1953, in the late 1930s and 1940s, gold miners, Protestant missionaries and government officials were aware of the ritualistic cannibalism of eastern highland tribes. It's reported the four people believe the land in which they live is alive and created the world. The land created the ancestor guardians, known as the Amani, from which the four people were descendants. The four people have five souls, the Uma, the Ama, the Aona, the Yasegi, and the Quella. Once past, the Awema, or good aspects of the person, travel to the land of the dead. In order to help them reach the land of the dead, the deceased family member would leave food with the body for two to three days. After, they would bury, entomb, or cook and consume their deceased family member. If consumed, the deceased's armor would bless those who ate it. The special abilities of a person would be passed on to the deceased's preferred child and the ancestral power to all children. Purification rituals would take place to ensure the pollution of the dead body did not hurt those who ate it. Four men did not often participate in the consumption of flesh as they believed it weakened them in times of battle. 
This fact explained why the men in the tribes were less likely to suffer Kuru, as women and children were usually the ones to cook and eat the flesh, including the brain, containing a prion particle responsible for Kuru. It also explained why it's limited to Papua New Guinea's eastern highlands and neighbouring linguistic groups, as the practice of endocannibalism was spread from villages with contact to one another. As the epidemic spread, it claimed the lives of around 2,700 people. The four people believed Kuru to be the cause of sorcery, believing the magic was contagious, often referring to this magic as Negnagi, meaning foolish person to describe the victim's sporadic outbursts of laughter. This belief often led to vendetta murders against those who they believed to be the sorcerer orchestrating the Kuru magic. The start of this disease was not a magic, but rather believed to have started when one villager developed sporadic Crotesville Jacob disease and died. As was customary, the villager's brain was eaten, and those who had participated were infected. It is believed in the early 60s the four people had stopped consuming human flesh, though the disease lingered as Kuru lay dormant for anywhere from 10 to 50 years. Though the practice of cannibalism stopped in 1960, the last death of Kuru is believed to have occurred between 2005 and 2009.